Yes. A thousand years after you sealed me underground, you return for the second time. <sighs> you should call it by its name, Ejdaha. Fate. Fate? Fate? <laughs> So here lies the wisdom of the gods. Destroy all deemed redundant, endless tyrants to ravage the wilderness. No, you have forgotten. That, that voice! Aishtaha. Huh? Kunjun? Morax, it's been a while. Ejdaha, the very same. During the battle, you imbued us with your power. <laughs> yes, it was all I could manage. Forgive me for concealing the truth, Traveler. There were things that only became clear to me upon reaching this tree. Allow me to elaborate. I am not Ejdaha the Whole but a fragment. Heaven and Earth, Yin and Yang, opposing forces. You can consider the existence of me and the Ejdaha you see there to be a reflection of such polarities. We are a schism of the will, the will of Ejdaha. So, so there are two Ejdahas? No, it can't be. That's impossible. When the seal loosened, your power manifested in this world as a child. With this new identity, you were able to vent about the forces that suppressed you. But would anyone listen? Would they even care? That's when it occurred to you. The loosening of the seal constituted an opportunity to strike back. Kidnapping the miners was all in aid of digging to the entrance to the seal itself. Your plan was to launch an attack on both ends, from outside and within, thereby fully destroying the seal. The audacity! Are you insane? If you truly are a part of me, how is it you find yourself standing on the side of the Betrayer? I was another power awakened with the loosening of the seal. Too weak to reincarnate, but strong enough to possess a human body. I was barely conscious. I couldn't remember who I was. Only the past would elicit a reaction from me. But my aim was clear. Find Morax, and aid him in stopping you. I had sensed that something was amiss when you mentioned Dragonfall. Had your power been but a little stronger, I would have recognized you. Don't blame yourself. I have changed beyond all recognition. Only when I touched the stone tablet did I truly remember. It's been so long. A secret beyond all comprehension of youthful humanity and ancient dragonkind. Morax, do you want to tell the tale? There would be no harm in it. The decision is yours. <laughs> you haven't changed. Then allow me. Ejdaha was once a friend and ally of the Geo Archon Morax, with a lifespan far exceeding that of mankind. However, that which is derived of the Earth is no more or less than the Earth itself. 
The memories of rocks do not last long. Those memories that survive are rooted in powerful emotion. But as time passes, so these memories fade into obscurity. Erosion is the world's greatest destroyer of memories. Erosion ground Ejdaha's consciousness into oblivion. Slowly, he forgot the face of his old friend, and his memories of defending Liyue Harbor disintegrated. Ejdaha, now incomplete, became irascible, aggressive. What would you expect? It was humanity that attacked the ley lines that sustained me! This much is true, which is why you attacked the chasm. Why you waged war against Morax. In the beginning, in order to open up new territory and increase production, the citizens of Liyue came to the mountains to mine. Overexploitation caused the ley lines to quake, which brought untold suffering to us. Erosion made us even more savage. No matter how we struggled, we lost the ability to coexist with humanity. We lost all reason. Morax shared with us some of his power to prevent further erosion. But it was futile. Everything returns to dust. It is the natural order, an unstoppable force. And so, we became you. And from your will, I emerged. <sighs> I am your final contract. Witness the promise between Ejdaha and Morax. You can hate me, but you cannot deny me. No! No! I am the remnants of Ejdaha's benevolence, the echo of a contract set in stone. I harbor a willingness to go further, a willingness to coexist peacefully with mankind. No, no! This is I, Ejdaha, forged of elemental crystal, bearer of the weight and memories of the Earth, Older than the mountains and the oceans that decides. I will not swear allegiance to this insect. Morax is not an insect. A lord over insects is nothing but an insect in turn. You forgot yourself. Nobody held Morax in higher regard than you or I. That which you have forgotten, I hold here in my heart. If you are the memory of the Earth, then I am the memory of coexistence. Of coexistence with humanity. All powers under heaven rise and fall of land and sea. A star appears within the wild. A sun ascends as bright as... Jade. Hmm. Strange. What? What is this feeling? And all this? You are spent, and I will soon disappear. Before I do, heed these words. In the wilderness, snow falls on a spring day. In an instant, it will melt. Even where it is fleeting and leaves no trace. Even where it will never fall again. No! That isn't true! I don't accept this as fate! Perhaps it isn't, but it remains an inevitable misfortune.
Are you satisfied, Ishtaha? I had to make amends. Satisfaction had no part in it. So, Morax. You call yourself Zhongli these days. I do. Well... I'm afraid old habits die hard. To me, you're Morax. As you please. I never did forget your gift of sight. I hardly lifted a finger. Think nothing of it. And yet, you could see. You wouldn't know the yearning of a blind dragon, searching for the sun. A pair of eyes, from Morax to Ejdah. This... I will remember this. Your power is nearly spent. Ah... Perceptive as always, my friend. Shall we get going, you and I? Surely the pressing matter is still that of the miners trapped outside the seal. Indeed. Hence the need to get going. To fix the damage left in your wake. Hmm. Straight down to business as always. Let's go. How did we get here? We need to go back and check on the miners! So there you are. My men and I found your clues and followed them straight here. We found Mao in a tent at the campsite unconscious. It seems he'll be okay. Sadly, we found no trace of the other three. Huh? Young Kun, what... what is... Nothing. Pay it no mind. Those three miners are over there, in that cave. Cave? What happened? They're exhausted, but not in danger. Don't worry. Uh, right. Well, thank you, all of you. I better go and see how they're doing. So you're taking them back to Liyue Harbor? That's right. Can I come with you? No problem. You rescued my men. I'll be happy to assist all of you in any way I can. I'll be back soon. I need to assess their condition. Kunjun! Uh, uh, we should be calling you Ejdaha. You're coming back to Liyue Harbor too, right? Not I. Merely this body. Once I'm gone, the true owner will accompany the miners back to Liyue. Kunjun hails from a family of famous artisans. He too will be famous in time. It would be a shame for someone of his talent to go missing. You always did have a great admiration for blacksmiths. Curious how swords and daggers are blind, yet their creators see so much. Perhaps... Empathy is mankind's proudest achievement after all. Ejdaha, I am no longer the Geo Archon. I can sense it. Today I am just an ordinary citizen of Liu. Even you met such a fate. <sighs> Let's get the difficult part out of the way. I cannot guarantee that I won't be awoken a second time. No matter. If that day comes to pass, Liyue must prepare itself to face you. And how will Liyue fare without Rex Lapis? Even without a god above, this remains a nation of men. I was once their god. I ought to be here to witness their rise and fall. All life is shaped 
and then ground away by the endless flow of time. You were always the strongest among us, yet it would seem that even you have been eroded. That's unimportant. Fate is ordained by heaven. Even if our mission had already concluded, it would be cowardly not to strike out on the road of departure. You may live forever, doomed to a lonely existence, yet even this is temporary. When you reach the end of time, those people, those past and future relationships predetermined by fate, they will be waiting for you. I do not pretend to match your rhetoric when it comes to the subject of a life long lived. I fear that the life of an elemental being is longer than any in this world. Were it not so, you would have killed me long ago, and would not be having to face me again now. You've brought a smile to my face. When all is said and done, a reunion between old friends is an auspicious occasion. That day in the chasm... Did you hesitate? A heart of stone is a heart nonetheless. But I am the god of contracts, and was for a time a god of the people of Liyue. You chose justice, but did not forsake your kindness. You came to me not as an assassin, and so I was willingly sealed away. The movements of the Earth Dragon can tremble the Earth and shake the heavens. With your abilities, even at my full strength, I struggled to confront you, let alone seal you away. Hence my inception. Do not forget that I was there with Liwa's founder. The face may have changed, but the content of the contract remains intact. Old friend, god of contracts, I hereby honor our agreement. <sighs> Thank you, Ishtaha. My life is nigh on eternal. I will go on with the infinite flow of time. And you, Morax, you too will live for many a day to come. <sighs> You're leaving? If it is fated, Morax, we will meet again. <gasps> yes, don't be alarmed. He's only asleep. Whoa, that was so weird. It was like he suddenly became another person. In fact, we have yet to meet the real Kunjun. He was. Centuries may have passed since then, but events from a thousand years ago remain crystal clear in my mind. In our last tale, Rex Lapis was walking alone in the mountains. He heard a remote voice, unlike any other, coming from a crack in the earth. Most of the ancient Geo life forms that live below Liyue are blind, having not seen the sunlight for an age. The voice was sometimes sad and song like. Other times it was loud and thunderous. The Lord of Geo searched here and there before finally unearthing a strange stone from the bedrock. That's how Ejdaha was. I answered his wish and took him above ground. The Lord of Geo took pity on the rock spirit and carved it into a magnificent work of craftsmanship, a vivid representation of a dragon. I bestowed him with a pair of eyes to see the world and came to an agreement with him. With his fingers, he made two eyes, quicker than words could tell. Lightning flashed and thunder roared, and a living, breathing dragon soared into the clouds. 
I agreed to let him live among the people above ground. But if the day ever came when he brought ruin to order, he would once again be sealed in the dark. The dragon accompanied the Lord of Geo, fighting campaigns alongside him in the four corners of the world. We have a saying to eulogize these events. The crash of a spear brought billowing dust. The mountains and waters made way at the sound. The sight of a dragon bestowed with a touch the promise of rainwater blessing the ground. A thousand years ago, Ejdaha attacked the chasm. I tried to obstruct him, fighting him tooth and nail down the length and breadth of the mine. Finally, I brought him down and sealed him underground. During that battle, Dragonfall was born. Ejdaha could sense the stone. Subconsciously, he wanted to use it to find me. Despite being the victor, I could not claim to be stronger than he, and in his heart, he still retained an ounce of goodwill towards me, towards Leo, towards life above ground. He was willing to be sealed away, but as the erosion set in, he forgot. Even I cannot avoid it, but there is something I understand better than most. When the door opens, it is time to leave. The greater the power, the greater the danger erosion may bring about. The millennia may come and go, but even a stone may tire. Personally sealing away an old friend, this is just one form of erosion I have endured. People abandon and surrender the things they love to pursue the right path. Perhaps this is the erosion imposed on me by the heavenly principles. But I was a god of mankind. My identity may change, but my eyes will bear witness to the history of humanity. You still care a lot about Liyue. Call it... <sighs> part of my duty. I must thank you both. Oh? About what? Oh, yeah! Paimon nearly forgot! So, not long ago, we met a guy called Dane. He told us about Conria and the punishment of the gods. That's when we realized that those events were connected to the person we're searching for. Xiang Li, you're a god. You've lived through thousands of years of history. Surely you experienced the incident? Hmm. Uh... I cannot say. Why? You can't even give us a thread of information? This is so important to us! I understand. But I must apologize. This is my contract. You mean... Another past grievance? Like the incident with Ejda? Too painful to talk about? It was signed before it all began. I have always honored the contract. And kept my silence. How can you be like that? You two are friends to me. I can assure it brings me no pleasure to disappoint you. But as the god of contracts, I cannot go back on my word. Would you be ready to find out? It appears your understanding of this world continues to grow. There are many events of ages past. Many secrets that lie hidden. They have been eroded by time. Forgotten by the people. Abandoned. But you are capable of finding them and bringing them into the light. Those who come to witness, will witness. Those who are born to remember, will remember. If you take the same road as that person, there may be more difficulties ahead. But as long as you firmly believe that you are on the right path, everything has meaning.
This tablet was erected by Mountain Shaper. It names Ejdaha as a terrible dragon, and serves as a warning for later generations to stay away from this place, from the seal. It's a shame. There is a fine line between good and evil. If the good and evil within him could be summarized in a single sentence... Well, never mind. <laughs>